Welcome to Beginnings. This is session three of Beginnings. You know when God originally made the world? It was good. I mean, he made light, and after he made light, he looked at it and he said, man, it was good. And then after he made light, he made the waters, gathered the waters together, and the dry land appeared, and he turned around and looked at that and said, it was good. And then he made the grass, the plants, and the trees, and he turned around and said, that was good. And then he made the, the sun to rule over the day and the moon to rule over the night. And he turned around and looked at what he made and he said, it was good. It was good. And then he made the whales and the fish and the birds of the air. Turned around and said, it was good. that was good. Then he made the beast and the cattle and said, it was good. And then God turned around after he was done with everything, looked at everything that he made and said, it was very good. It was very good. The way God originally created this world was very good. Evolution teaches us something different. We learned in the last lesson, evolution teaches us that 20 billion years ago, uh, an explosion occurred that created everything that we have here today. You and I are the result of the big bang, according to the evolution theory. Now, I as a creationist do not believe in the big bang creating everything. If I do believe in a big bang, it would be God spoke and it was. That's right. So that's the only big bang I'm going to believe in. All right. Now, the Bible clearly teaches, as we saw last week, that the world began about 6,000 years ago. Then 4,400 years ago, there was a flood that destroyed the world. 2,000 years ago is when who lived here? Jesus. Actually, a whole lot of people, but Jesus was one of them. That's exactly right. And now here, here we are today waiting for God to come back. Now, what was that period of time like before the flood destroyed this world? What was it like before the flood annihilated God's perfect creation. That's what we want to discuss tonight because in the beginning it was good. and it really was good. So we're going to try to answer several questions this evening. We'll go through as many as we possibly can. What was it like before the flood? You know the Bible teaches man lived over 900 years before the flood came. Did they really live to be that old? We'll talk about that. Hey, the average age before the flood was 912. That's impressive. They lived to be a lot older. What about the millions of years ago? Well, we looked at that last week. Obviously, there wasn't millions of years ago. So how do you explain dinosaurs? When did the dinosaurs exist? If they didn't live millions of years ago, if the world is only 6,000 years old, then when did they live? We'll get to talk about that this week and next week. Hey, where did all the water come from to flood the entire world when the flood happened? Where did all that water go to? Is it true that there were really giant people over 10 feet tall that lived here on earth? Man, hold on, because we're going to get to talk about all of this, and we're going to go as fast as we possibly can. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 3 tells us, Knowing this first, there shall come in the last days scoffers. Now you got to understand, these have got to be the last days because we got a lot of scoffers that scoff at God's word. Here's what the Bible, not me, but the Bible says about scoffers. It says the scoffers are going to walk after their own lusts. The reason they scoff at the Bible is not because of science, it's because of sin. That's the real reason people scoff and reject God's word. Here's what the Bible says about these scoffers. It says in verse 4, they're going to say, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. So these scoffers are going to try to say, hey, the way things are happening now is the way they've always been happening. When really that's not true. That's uniformitarianism, something that is now taught today. Look at verse number five. It says, for this they willingly are ignorant of. Now, willingly ignorant. If you go back to the original Greek, that means dumb on purpose. Okay, They're willingly ignorant about a couple things. You kids know what I'm talking about, right? Hey, did you touch that? Touch what? <laughs> willingly ignorant, okay? It says they're willingly ignorant about a couple different things. First of all, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth was standing out of the water and in the water, 
Well, how is that possible? How can you have the earth stand out of the water and in the water at the exact same time? Well, we're going to talk about that here in just a second, okay? Second thing the scoffers are ignorant of is the flood that destroyed the world. How the, the flood totally destroyed the world. Check it out in verse 6. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. That's obviously referring to the obviously referring to the flood. And then they're also willingly ignorant of the coming judgment of God. So we see scoffers ignorant of three different things. The creation, because if there really is a creation, that means there is a, there's a creator. And they're willingly ignorant of the flood, because if there really was a worldwide flood, that means the creator has the right to judge his creation. And he does. This is his world. He can wreck it if he wants. And they're willingly ignorant of the coming judgment of God because they want to live their life how they want to here on earth. They don't want to think about getting judged for the way they behave. Bottom line is, the Bible says judgment day is coming soon to a city near you. Okay, Get ready for judgment day. It really is going to happen. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 5. And God called the light day and the darkness. He called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament. Let's stop right there. What in the world is a firmament? Okay, let's read on now because sometimes the Bible explains itself. It usually does that, okay? Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. People say, oh, Eric, I know what the firmament is. It's the dirt. The dirt keeps the water away from the water. No, that is not the firmament. Good try, though. Good try. Check out verse number 20 of Genesis chapter 1. It says, God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl. Uh, that's a bird, not a baseball or a basketball, okay? Um, fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Um, the birds do not fly in the dirt. They fly in the air, okay? So the firmament, also referred to as the first heaven, is the atmosphere, what we're breathing right now. You guys got a little taste of heaven every single time you breathe, okay? Because the firmament is the atmosphere, the first heaven. There's more than one heaven, by the way. Remember, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night. Second heaven is outer space, where the sun, moon, and stars, and some of you are at right now. There's also a third heaven. You guys remember the story about the Apostle Paul when he got rocked to sleep? Or no, uh, stoned to death. Yeah, he got stoned to death outside the city of Lister. It says he was caught up to the third heaven. There's more than one heaven. There's three of them. Our atmosphere, outer space, and then where God lives, there are three heavens. The Bible says the heavens plural, declare the glory of God. Okay, verse number seven. And God made the firmament, the atmosphere, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament? Hold on here. What's going on here? Water above the atmosphere? Is that really possible? Is that really what it used to be like? I think so. David, the psalmist, said in Psalms, Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. That's what I think Second Peter chapter 3 was talking about, how the earth was standing out of the water and in the water at the same time. Because I believe the pre-flood world, when it was good, I believe the pre-flood world had a canopy of water that surrounded Earth's atmosphere. Now, I got to tell you, not all creationists believe this theory, but I happen to believe this theory, and I happen to believe there's lots of evidence that, to go along with this theory, and the Bible, I believe, supports this theory. So I believe the pre-flood world had a canopy of water that surrounded Earth's atmosphere. You see, Earth's atmosphere today has got six layers to it. You got the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, th uh, thermosphere, ionosphere. It used to have a seventh layer, a hydrosphere. Now, this layer of water would have done a number of things for life on Earth, okay? If you had a layer of water surrounding Earth's atmosphere, it would condense Earth's atmosphere into a smaller area, giving you more what they call atmospheric pressure. Right now, you guys are under 14.7 pounds per square inch of atmospheric pressure. 
Well, who knows what it was like before the flood if there was a layer of water surrounding it. There might have been more atmospheric pressure. Uh, so the world would have been very, very different before the flood with this layer of water surrounding it. Now, by the way, not only was there a layer of water surrounding the atmosphere, I also believe there was a layer of water underneath the crust of the earth. The Bible talks about this. It says he stretched out the earth above the waters. Interesting. Another place in Psalms, it says, The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. He hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. I believe the pre-flood world had a built-in sprinkler system underground. It was really cool. The Bible talks about that in the Garden of Eden, how a mist went up from the ground and watered the whole face of the earth. I believe the pre-flood world had a built-in sprinkler system. There was water underneath the crust of the earth. By the way, there still is water underneath the crust of the earth in many places, okay? So the original creation was very different than what we currently see today. The original creation was good, and it was very, very good. You say, well, Eric, what happened to all that water? The water that was above and the water that was below, where, where is it now? Well, it's still here. It's just not all in the same places. You say, well, how did it come down? The Bible tells us about that in Genesis chapter 7. Check out what it says. That same day, all the fountains of the great deep broke up, and the windows of heaven were opened. This is talking about when the flood came to destroy the world. I believe when the flood came, the water that was above came pouring down, and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. And the water that was above the atmosphere came pouring down as rain. And the water that was underneath the crust of the earth came shooting up out of the ground as the earth cracked because of the weight of all this water. Hey, maybe that's why we still have fault lines in the world today. You know, there are fault lines that go all over the globe today. I've been to many of them, the Nematic Fault, the Hayward's Fault, the San Andreas Fault. None of them are my fault, but I've been there, seen them, have a t-shirt. These fault lines run all around the world. I can't help but think, what if those are when the fountains of the great deep broke up, just like the Bible told us happened? at the time of the flood. Interesting. You know, there's a new theory out about what killed the dinosaurs. Some people are saying maybe lack of oxygen is what actually killed the dinosaurs. You say, how could lack of oxygen kill a dinosaur? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Well, here's what they say. They say an 80-foot-long Apatosaurus had the same size nostrils as a modern-day horse. Not as the horse, but as the horse's nostrils. They, never mind. Anyway, this 80 foot long animal is trying to suck wind through nostrils the same size as a horse's, horse's nostrils today. How, how is he going to breathe? He would have a very, very hard time breathing or snore really bad, one or the other, okay? This guy couldn't breathe in today's environment. But what if there was that canopy of water? And what if it did give us more atmospheric pressure so that every time you breathe, it's easier to breathe and you get more oxygen into your system? Interesting. Then he might have been able to live no problem. You know, they find amber, which is petrified tree sap. Sometimes they find air bubbles trapped inside this amber. When they examine the air bubbles, they realize these air bubbles contain 50% more oxygen than what is in today's atmosphere. Interesting. Today's atmosphere is 20.9%. This stuff has 35% oxygen. Wow. Now, I don't know if you realize this, but under those conditions, if you had, say, double atmospheric pressure and increased levels of oxygen, get this, under those conditions, not only would your hemoglobin take on oxygen, but your plasma would get oxygen saturated. You guys have no clue what that means, do you? <laughs> that means you could literally run for hundreds of miles and you'd never get tired. Adam and Eve didn't need a car. They could run to grandma's. <laughs> Except they didn't have a grandma. <laughs> or a mother-in-law. <laughs> I think that's why they called it paradise. But uh, anyway, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. My... My wife has a fantastic mother-in-law. She is really, she is great, I tell you. She really is good. But um, 
Yeah, under these conditions, life would be very different than the way it is today in today's world. The original world was good, man. Let me tell you, it was really, really good. Now, the sun is sending down x-rays down here, and all day long, you and I get x-rayed from the sun. These little x-ray bullets are coming right through the buildings that you're in, right through your body, right into the ground, and every single day of your life, you're getting x-rayed by the sun. You guys know what an x-ray is, right? It's one of those things, if you ever go to the hospital to get an x-ray, they put you in this little room, they tell you to take off all your clothes and put a gown on. The gown that they give you never comes together in the back. It's a little bit embarrassing, okay? Then um, they, you, you come out, you know, holding your clothes and trying to hold the gown together. They say, okay, we need you to walk down this hallway about 12 miles. When you get down there, you should see the x-ray room. All right, so you finally make it down the hallway going like this. You get down there, you get to the x-ray room, and the guy says, oh, I'm glad you made it. Come on in. And he makes you lay down on a freezing cold table, okay? Freezing cold table. I mean, you start to stick to the thing if you're not careful, all right? Then he puts a funny-looking machine over you, tells you to take a deep breath, and then he runs away. You say, wait a minute, Doc, what's going on? What you doing? He says, well, we're going to have to x-ray you. You say, yeah, I got that part figured out, but why are you running away? He says, well, this machine is dangerous. I say, well, then what am I doing here? (laughs) He says, oh, no, don't worry. It's not dangerous if you're only going to get a few, but overexposure to x-rays is very dangerous. So that's why he runs and hides behind his lead wall, because lead or concrete or a certain amount of water will stop harmful x-rays. Interesting. So they put that machine over you, they take an x-ray, these little x-ray bullets go through your body, into the table, into the film that's underneath the table, and they actually expose what's inside of you in reverse image, which is why, by the way, many radiologists have a negative outlook on life. I don't know if you've met any of those, but I certainly have. Now, your skin has to battle the war against these x-rays, okay? And after several years of battling the wars against the holes that the x-rays are putting in your skin eventually your skin's going to start to give up. It's going to start to lose the battle against the x-rays. And eventually your skin's going to start to get wrinkled up. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. You say, Eric, I don't want to get old and wrinkled. Okay. Die early. (laughs) There you go. Problem solved, right? All right. So the the interesting thing, though, is the sun is sending down these x-rays to us all the time. What would happen if there was a layer of water that surrounded the Earth's atmosphere that filtered out the harmful x-rays from the sun? I wonder what life would be like then. You know, it's interesting. The Bible tells us how long people lived. The average age before the flood really was, according to the Bible dates, 912. Some people say, Eric, (laughs) you don't understand. A year wasn't really a year back then. A month was a year back then. Yeah. To get the real age, you got to divide by 12. I don't think so. Uh, did you know that Enoch was 65 when he had Methuselah? A couple of people were 65 when they had children. Let's see, 65 divided by 12. That means they were five and a half when they became a dad. Uh, no. They didn't count every month as a year. They really did live to be over nine hundred years old. Not only did they live longer, they also grew a whole lot bigger back then. Here's a statue of Robert Wadlow, tallest man of last century. Robert Wadlow stood eight foot eleven and a quarter inches tall. Here he is next to his dad and his brother, big boy, absolutely enormous boy, lived in Illinois, all right? Robert was a big boy, but he's not the biggest one that's ever lived. They found a skeleton in a coal mine in Italy of a guy 11 feet 6 inches tall. How'd you like to have him on your basketball team? Yeah, that would be nice. Hey, throw the ball to Herman. (laughs) Drop it in, Herman. Good job. Go down there and do something now. Okay, now come back down here. Wow, that would be absolutely a lot of fun. They have found unbelievable skeletons, I'm telling you guys, from, I believe, before the flood. A skeleton nine feet, eight inches tall was found in a burial mound in Indiana. A skeleton ten feet long was found in Nevada. They found eight giants together, uh, skeletons of them, ranging from eight to nine feet long. 
They say, though, they say, through the bungling of the diggers and the total disinterest of the archaeological museum establishment, these discoveries have been scattered and lost. Excuse me? How do you lose a nine-foot skeleton? <laughs> Where did I put him? He's gone. <laughs> that does. And why would you be disinterested in it? Wouldn't that generate some interest? Unless you believe in evolution. See, according to evolution, we evolved from primates. And we're supposed to be getting bigger and better, stronger and smarter. And this kind of goes against the evolution worldview, the religion of evolution. So you might have to cover up some of that stuff. They found a skeleton 12 feet tall in California. Wow. Another one was found in Arizona, 12 foot tall skeleton. Here's a human skull that was discovered that is almost twice the size of yours and mine. It's huge. Unbelievable. How about your thumb? You guys got three bones in your thumb. Make sure you guys got all three of them. You got all three? There should be a middle one right there, okay? They found a middle human thumb bone to a guy that was three and a half inches long. I think it's safe to assume that guy had a big thumb. Yeah. <laughs> Probably had a really big hand and was probably really big himself. He was a giant. You're not going to believe me, but in Egypt, they discovered a 47-inch long femur. That's the bone that goes from your hip to your knees. I've got two of them personally, okay? 47-inch long femur. That is impressive. The guy that owned that thing had to be really big. They guess anywhere from 15 to 16 feet tall. So if you ever meet one of his brothers, call him sir. <laughs> or whatever he wants to be called, okay? But don't mess with him. Absolutely don't mess with him. They found a jawbone of a guy that was six and a half inches from TMJ to TMJ. We could like fit that over our jaws. Huge. You know, the Bible tells us there were giants in the earth in those days. You know what I believe? There were giants in the earth in those days. That's exactly right. Now, not only were people living longer and growing bigger, animals lived longer and grew bigger before the flood. And there's lots of evidence to support this as well. They found a fossilized hornless rhinoceros that was 18 feet tall. That's a big rhino. Hey, with the, with the conditions the way they were before the flood, with the canopy of water surrounding the atmosphere, giving us more atmospheric pressure, insects could get a whole lot bigger. Because insects can only get so big based on the atmospheric pressure. Because they breathe through their skin. Well, I wonder how big insects could get before the flood. Check out this fossil. It is a fossil dragonfly. You say, who cares? We got those today. This one happens to have a 50-inch wingspan. How'd you like to hit that at 70 miles an hour? <laughs> Take the bug deflector and the hood right off, man. Wow. That's going to be a problem. You guys got cockroaches around here, right? They have found fossilized cockroaches 18 inches long. Ladies, what do you do when you find one of those in the kitchen? That's going to be bad, okay? They've discovered fossilized centipedes eight feet long. Huge centipedes have been discovered. Fossil grasshoppers two feet long have been discovered. Fossilized cattails 60 feet tall have been discovered. A fossil donkey was discovered in Texas that was nine feet tall at the shoulder. Whoa. Buffalo horns have been found where the span of the horns from tip to tip was 12 feet. Big buffalo. Fossilized beavers have been discovered 8 feet long. Huge beavers have been discovered. Here's a beaver's jaw. They say this beaver had to be 7 to 8 feet long. Big beaver. Well, that's because they had big trees. So they needed... Big beavers to chew those trees down. I believe fish got a little bit bigger before the flood. They would have gotten a lot bigger. 
You know, they say you can tell how big a shark is based on its teeth. If you find a shark's tooth that is one inch long, that represents 12 to 15 feet worth of shark. Well, in that case, I wonder how big this one was. How about that one? That guy was huge. They say this shark right here had to be more than 80 feet long. A huge shark. He could eat jaws and not even know it. (laughs) Jaws was only 32 feet long. This guy had to be more than 80 feet long. I'm telling you, the, the world before the flood was amazing, man. When God originally made the world, it was It was really, 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 really good. They have found fossilized turtles 15 feet tall or wide or long. Kind of depends on how you put them. (laughs) But uh, big turtles have been discovered. Fossilized birds have been discovered 13 feet tall. How'd you like to have that one for Thanksgiving dinner? Have a few leftovers after that, wouldn't you? Hey, reptiles have a very interesting characteristic. You know, reptiles never stop growing. They grow throughout their entire life. People, when we reach a certain age, we stop growing, at least vertically. Some continue horizontally long after that, but uh, we stop growing. Reptiles never stop growing. I wonder what some reptiles would look like if you put them back in the Garden of Eden. Let them live to be eight or nine hundred years old if they never stop growing. I bet you would have yourself A big lizard. A terrible lizard. You know the word dinosaur means terrible lizard? Interesting. You think that's where the dinosaurs came from? Is it possible the dinosaurs were just big lizards that lived in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve? Check this Jackson chameleon out. You can buy him in a pet store today. It's a lizard that has three horns on his head. What would he look like at about uh, 800 years old and a couple of tons? A triceratops. That's exactly right. People say, that's ridiculous. Dinosaurs and man never lived together. Well, they find their bones buried right next to each other. That ought to give us a pretty good clue. Look, guys, before the flood, the world was a different place. When God originally made this world, it was it was really, really good at one time. Some people that look at our world today, and they're looking at a wrecked creation, a ruined creation, and they're going, how could God make this? God's going, I didn't make it that way. I didn't make all the, the death and suffering. I didn't do that. Remember, what brought death and suffering into this world? Sin did. By man came death. Yeah, in Adam all die. Sin is what caused that. Darwin had a problem with this. Darwin wrote, I am bewildered. I had no intention to write atheistically, but there seems to be so much misery in the world. Darwin looked at the world today. Looked at what's going on today and said, I can't believe in a God that would make that. And God's response is, I didn't make it that way. When I made it, when I first did it, in the beginning, it was it was very, very good. Thank you for joining us tonight. I look forward to session four. But for tonight, remember, originally, it was, it was good. Thank you. Have a good night.